Okay, everyone. <clears throat> we talk about gall stone diseases. Now we have here we have five important terminologies so <coughs> that we should differentiate between them. We have first what is what do you mean by asymptomatic gall stone disease? What is the difference between this and chronic cholecystitis? And we have also biliary colics. We have acute cholecystitis, and we have calcular obstructive jaundice. Now, we can add also to these five, we can add <coughs> gallstones, pancreatitis, and gallstones, alias. So, this are important terminologies related to gallstones you should know we know from our anatomy that <coughs> the bile comes from the liver through the left hepatic duct and the right hepatic duct both of them they join together and they give us the common hepatic duct then the bile is stored in the gallbladder which is connected to the common hepatic duct by the cystic duct the cystic duct is about two to three centimeter in size in length and two to three centimeter millimeter in diameter together they give us a common bile duct which is about eight millimeter in diameter and 8 centimeters in length. Now, the common bile duct will migrate down, will pass behind the duodenum, first supraduodenal, then retroduodenal, then it will pass <coughs> behind the head of the pancreas. It will join the common, the pancreatic duct, the major pancreatic duct, together they will, they will form the ampulla of water, which you open in the second part of the duodenum in the major duodenal papilla. And this is guarded here by the sphincter of Oddi. Now, if the patient develops stones, Usually stones in the gallbladder, they develop due to cholesterol, oversaturating the, gall, the, gall, the bile. Now, if the stones form, commonly we see that in fatty females, uh, they, they, remain, they may remain asymptomatic, and this would be called asymptomatic gall stones. <coughs> there is an argument here regarding the surgical treatment for patients with asymptomatic gall stones. Many surgeons, they advocate to do surgery and removal of the gallbladder. Now, if the stones start to induce inflammation and pain within the gallbladder, then the patient will have what we call it chronic calcular cholecystitis, chronic calcular cholecystitis. And the patient will have chronic attacks, here can attacks of abdominal pain, and <coughs> this pain mainly in the right hypochondrial area, I refer to the right shoulder, and it, it radiates back sometimes to the scapula, and usually the definitive treatment here is surgical resection. If the stone migrate down and obstruct the cystic duct, then we have what we call it the biliary colics. The pain will be colic in nature and more severe, and the patient may need admission for a short duration. Also, you have to prepare for surgery later on. Now, if the stones fails to migrate back, if, when it obstructs the cystic duct or the Hartman pouch, then the bacteria will over multiply here within the gallbladder and it will give us acute cholecystitis. This is an acute abdomen. It's a severe inflammation. The patient comes with severe fever and, um, and he have severe abdominal pain in the right hypochondrial area. The patient is very ill, may have vomiting, loss of appetite, nausea, and you will find also positive Murphy sign in this patient, which is a rest of breathing in inspiration when you put your thumb or your finger in the right hypochondrial area. So it's an important sensitive sign for acute cholecystitis. Now, if <coughs> you should, if you, do, you if you face someone a patient like this, you have to treat him urgently, and uh, we can go for emergency surgery sometimes if he's not improving, or we can, if he's improving, we can plan for elective cholecystectomy later on. Now, sometimes the stone migrate down or struck here, and this will give us calcular obstructive jaundice, and the patient will come with dark urine, pale stool, yellow, yellowish discoloration of the sclera and the skin, and itching, and also you have to remove the stone from here urgently or otherwise the patient will be at risk of a lot of complications like hepatic encephalopathy, hepaturina syndrome, bleeding tendency, and so on. If the stone migraine lower down here and obstruct the uh, ampulla of water, it will give us acute pancreatitis, calcular acute pancreatitis. And we should know that gall stones is the most common cause of acute pancreatitis. Uh, sometimes the stone reach the intestine, either through the ambulla, which is a difficult way, or through a fistula, called a cystoenteric fistula, which is the fastest way. They can reach the intestine, and then they can migrate here down, and they can reach the ileum, and they can lead to intestinal obstruction. And this will, we call it gall stones alias. Okay? So we have to differentiate between these terminologies and gall stone diseases. Gall stones, either asymptomatic gall stones, or chronic cholecystitis, or biliary colic, or acute cholecystitis, or obstructive jaundice, and acute pancreatitis, and gall stone alias. Okay? 
थैंक यू वेरी मच